Hi, this is Julie Hart, and you're listening to Pipe Bomb Radio, the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. Howdy, howdy, everyone. This is Paul London, the Intrepid Traveler, and you are listening to Pipe Bomb Radio. Hey, this is professional wrestler and certified DDP yoga instructor Stevie Richards telling you that you're listening to Pipe Bomb Radio. This is the king of the mountain, Jeff Jarrett, the founder and CEO of Global Force Wrestling, and you're listening to Pipe Bomb Radio. I'm waking up. You're listening to Pipe Bomb Radio with your host, the founder, Felix Olmedo, and the godfather, Nate Milton. Welcome, everybody, to Pipe Bomb Radio. What a difference two weeks can make, let me tell you guys. We obviously had our Halloween show two weeks ago. And had fun with it. And, of course, we thank Pat and Joe and and Elio, obviously, for joining us and having some fun with that. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it as much as we did because we try to make it as fun as possible. That aside, we've got back to business, of course. We've got the 2016, one of the 30th annual WWE Survivor Series. Lots to talk about with that. And, of course what everybody's been talking about pretty much the entire week so far is the fact that we've got a new president. And let's just be honest, guys. Did did any of us expect him to win? That and the reaction afterwards. I mean, let us grow up, people, because it's just reality is, is that it's done. It's over with. Four years. Either he's going to do a double, either Trump is going to do a double turn, and like everybody else, like he's going to do the two terms, or he's not. And if somebody else decides that they can take him down in four years, so be it. But yes, we're going to touch about touch on that just a little bit because apparently that's been a topic of uh, many discussions over the last several several days, and probably will be until January when he steps into office. But. Um, Leading into the WWE Survivor Series this year, they've got the go-home show, Monday Night Raw. They are trying to recreate a match that many considered the worst match in WrestleMania history. And, no, it's not going to be at WrestleMania. Let me just make sure everybody knows that. Obviously, it's going to be at the Survivor Series. Now, Goldberg, he ends up being in the newest 2K17 uh, game for WWE games or the 2K sports, excuse me. And well, they get him to come out of retirement for one more match. Wink, wink. Could it be his last? I don't think so. But he comes out of retirement nonetheless. They've been building him up for a couple of weeks now. He will be taking on the Beast, Brock Lesnar. Or how do they refer to him as the Beast Incarnate? There you go. Brock. Brock. Lesnar. Say that right? I think I did. I don't think I can make give it as, as passionately as Paul Heyman can do it, but you know, it's not bad. I bet. But um, to put this match together, think about this, guys. Both men in 2004 were on their way out of the company. Neither one of them gave a shit about the match. They gave it a really piss poor performance. The fans in New York, well, let me just tell you, I've been in the in the, in the crowds in New York City. If they are not happy, they will let you know. And they were pretty pissed because they knew both were leaving. And at that point, nobody knew whether or not we'd ever see either one of them ever again in the WWE. Fast forward 12 years later, Brock Lesnar has returned and has created a legacy for himself unlike any other. There will probably be nobody ever to do to do what Brock has done. And they are definitely showing that off. To bring this guy, bring in Bill Goldberg for the rematch, mainly to show that I'm going to say that uh, Lesnar is going to get his revenge and, and clear his name from that victory so that he can continue his legacy. 
But nonetheless, you know, they are saying that they are returning to Canada for the first time, for the Survivor Series, for the first time since the infamous Montreal screw job, which should be kind of interesting because I wonder how much, I mean, controversial comments, well, no, I can't say controversial because there's nothing that's really going to involve Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart. I would like to think that they won't bring it up during the, the commentary, but I have to say that anything's possible. Then again, with, with uh, Cole, with uh, Corey Graves and Byron Saxon, in order to get people's attention, I wouldn't be surprised what they bring up to, to, to get people into the matches or even into, the, into their own discussion. But anyways, I'm going to stop rambling for just a minute. And welcome my partner here, Nate Milton. He is the busiest man on the mic. He is anywhere and everywhere. And people, this guy works his ass off, let me tell you. And he doesn't just work for, you know, besides his regular work, he does these podcasts for many different shows pretty much around the world and gets heard pretty much around the world. So, what's up, Nate? Hey, what's going on, Brother Felix? I mean, you, you talk about me, you know, being so busy, man. It's like I. I think I could carve out some time, man. I think if America wants to have a revote, I, I, I'll throw my hat in the ring and I can be the president. <laughs> let, let, let's make America, let, let's make America Nate again, Felix. Let's make America Nate again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are going to talk about that for sure because that's been a very hot topic for almost the entire week now since Tuesday for sure. Woo. But um, uh, let's go ahead and bring on uh, another person who. Coincidentally, let's just throw it out there. Obviously, you guys were here. You were hearing obviously that the WWE is going to be in Canada for the Survivor Series, and it's been the first time since the Montreal Screw Job. Why don't we have a Canadian on the panel? And that obviously we bring in our good buddy Elio. Hey guys, Elio. What about brother? How's it going? Wow, yeah, you're speaking you more loudly Canadian today. I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're speaking more loudly today, Ilya. I can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, I got. Um, actually, uh, I'm not even alone right now. You oh got. Uh, you got like about. <laughs> you got about 78 listeners tuning in. How many? 78. Hey, I ain't complaining. No, I am <laughs> not complaining. But um, there is a lot what's, of what's going on. You know, what's it's going like on? <laughs> right. A lot has happened in two weeks, and I'm not even sure where to begin. That's why I was talking about a little bit, and I'm not sure, Ilio, if you're a fan of the new president or not, WWE Hall of Famer Donald Trump. But we're going to talk about him a little bit for sure. But before we do that, let's go ahead and jump into the uh, Survivor Series. Well, he needs to talk about the biggest stunner. (laughs) Well, he must have taken uh, Linda, Linda McMahon uh, school on stunning. No offense, because <laughs> Linda Linda couldn't take one either. So, bless her heart. <laughs> she's probably the, she's probably the only McMahon that I actually like. So, besides Shane, but so Shane could take one and take one really well. I don't think anybody yeah. could take a stunner better than The Rock, though. Let me just put it out there. No objection. Awesome. I love it. <laughs> well, you know, I like the fact that that they, uh, the the Survivor Series, you know, because if you guys remember, for the longest time, it had been discussed that maybe the Survivor Series is going to be scrapped from the WWE lineup because it just Vince, I guess, or even the, the higher ups felt that it was it, it, it ran its course. It's not as uh, the end thing anymore. Maybe it's time to take take it take it off the lineup and do something different. I'm glad they didn't do that because now it's gone back to the traditional five on five. Well, the, the, the tag team matches, Survivor Series, a team re- survival where it's now Raw being led by Stephanie and, and Mick Foley against SmackDown Live being led by Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan. And right off the bat, we're going to we're going to talk about the main event real quick. I have to pose the question because I've been asking anybody who knew about this their thoughts, and I'm going to go obviously to to our Canadian. Uh, colleague here. I don't know, our, 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 our uh, analyst from, uh, from Canada would throw that. How, how about that? That's probably better. And of course, our, our buddy Nate here. How in the hell can they recreate a match and really get us hyped for a match 
that many considered to be the worst match in WrestleMania history. <laughs> They're going part two, but this time it's at the Survivor Series. This match was first absolutely was, horrible. I, I, uh, first one was Brock Lesnar and Goldberg, you know, they both were on their way out the door in 2004, so they didn't really give a crap about the match. Goldberg won it, but who cares? Now, 12 years later, it's back, and people notice notice mm-hmm. Goldberg's ring rust because I don't believe he's been in the ring for a while, or if, if at all, really. But, Nate, I'm going to throw it over to you, bud. What do you think about this whole thing? I mean, they're getting us excited for a match that was horrible, that could very well be horrible again. Yeah, I, I don't for the quality of the match, Felix, let's just say it that way, but I, I do think it'll be a, a good spectacle. I think Brock, <laughs> like it or not, is like Brock, like it or not, is probably still one of the top draws in the company, at least, you know, yeah. in terms of somebody that can get outside eyes. You know, he can get on ESPN. You know, he can he can bridge that gap to the casual sports fan. And Goldberg still is over. You know, we, we saw it on that Raw where he showed up in Colorado, and it was just great. Um, but I, I don't have high hopes for the match, man. I think it's it's not the, who I would have had Goldberg in there with on his comeback. Uh, but I guess if they're trying to decide what would be the biggest spectacle, this is probably it. And uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, I think that it's it's not. Did we lose it? You there, Nate? I'm here. Oh, oh I thought we lost you there for a second. Oh, I was hearing like air. <laughs> I was hearing dead air there. That, that was uh, that was uh, Paul Heyman trying to jam the signal. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. And uh, Elio, your thoughts on this uh, Goldberg and Lesnar too? I don't know. The first one was uh, pretty bad. I remember mm-hmm. I was uh, like, I was watching it next door at my neighbor's house. That was uh, that was pretty bad. I don't know how this one's gonna turn out. Honestly, I feel like this, this one there because Brock has been on such a role for the company, and it, like like Nate was saying, he he brings a lot of eyes. He brings a lot of notoriety. He brings a lot of uh, people watching to see what he's gonna do next because of all the things they've allowed him to do. They allowed him to take the street. Mm. They allowed him to, and I'm still very, very, very hurt about that. You know, I'm, I'm, my heart's broken still, you know. Anyways. Um, it'll, be, it'll be okay. For you. They allow- <laughs> I don't think it'll ever be okay because that fool took that streak. But anyways. Uh, <laughs> well, they allowed- well, what's, what's, Celine, what's Celine Dion, uh, Elio's Canadian neighbor, say, Felix? Your heart will go on, brother. Oh, oh no, no, no. You did not bring that oh, up. Oh, no, you did <laughs> 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 you know, they, they allowed Brock Lesnar to destroy Cena, to create the name Suplex City. You know, yep. they, they allowed him to be, win the world championship, and they just basically let him do whatever he wanted and even compete in the UFC while he's still under contract to WWE. So, so on the cover of the video game. Gonna happen, right, there's that too. You know, I don't see this any happening any other way except for the fact that they're hyping a match that Brock Lesnar is going to come in and destroy him. Because – why allow their big draw to lose to a man who hasn't competed in 12 years? Yep. You know, that's the bottom line. That's just how it's going to happen. There's just no other way to look at it. Anyways, uh, moving on to the actual brand show, <clears throat> the brand versus brand show, excuse me. We've got the tag team. They decided to do a tag team of women's and the men's uh Team Elimination, Team Raw versus Team SmackDown Live. In the tag team, they've got the New Day as the captains, teaming up with Sheamus and Cesaro, Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson, Enzo Amore, and Big Cass, as well as the Shining Stars, which that last edition was kind of stupid. Not a fan <laughs> of these guys, but anyways. <clears throat> they're taking on Team SmackDown, Heath Slater, Rhino, the Hype Bros, Zack Ryder and Mojo Raleigh. American Alpha, Jason Jordan, and Chad Gable, the Usos, and Brizongo, another team I'm still kind of not really high on just yet. 
in the tag teams, what tag team could possibly come out of this superior and what benefits can come of this? Does that mean that if, let's just say, if, if Raw is victor- victorious, excuse me, could we see maybe one of the teams from SmackDown end up going over to Raw? Or maybe Raw, I mean, let me rephrase it. Yeah, actually, that's a good idea. If one of the teams from Raw, if the team Raw wins, does that mean that they can possibly draft one of the SmackDown teams over or vice versa? I mean, the tag team ranks have, have been mediocre at best because there haven't really been much tag team title matches that are entertaining. And I say this with the, with, with the fact that, let me get, just make it clear, New Day is entertaining, but they can only go so, so far without getting stale. And I get the idea that they were trying to beat Demolition's record. They made that quite clear. But what, when is enough enough? And out of this tag team, I, or the tag team elimination, I'm kind of going for SmackDown because they are kind of, to me, they, the teams that they have, it's almost like the underdogs because look at the, look at the stacked raw team. I mean, they're stacked. They got a good team. And I'm kind of yeah. shooting for the underdogs here, and that's SmackDown. Elio, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm going to go with the SmackDown team as well. I I feel like a SmackDown a bit better. It's like it's like the fastest two hours in every Tuesday night. <laughs> right. Monday night yeah, is still too, be too long, three hours. <laughs> <laughs> They're working on it. They're trying. <laughs> but um, I don't know. What do you think, Nate? Um, I think you know because they have like they haven't really been clear about the the stakes, Felix, but. Didn't they say, like, no, they whoever haven't. wins out of the three matches, like, whoever wins, they get, like, draft picks? Like, I think they brought it up once, and then they haven't brought it up since, uh, which means they'll, they'll probably bring it up, like, the, the, the week before. So, I'm, I'm going on that. I'm going on that assumption. So, I'm assuming whoever gets the most wins, you know, the draft picks. And, and something you and I have talked about, Felix, every week is SmackDown needs, you know, more bodies, you know? So Yes, yes. yes. I, I think SmackDown's going to win this uh, overall, and I think they win this match in particular. And I think the way you can do it is that, you know, we've already sown the seed for dissension with uh, on the Raw side. So I think, you know, we're, we're going to telegraph that, but I think they're going to deliver on that, uh, that telegraph. And SmackDown's going to win, and I think this is a spot where you can elevate a team like uh, American Alpha. Like, I think they'd really get a big boost from being the, the sole surviving team in, 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 in this match. And I think uh, yeah. you know, the New Day, I, I think New Day will probably break the record, or they'll, they'll, they'll either come just up to it and lose, or they'll break the record. Uh, but you're right. They do have a problem in that the New Day can only go so far without a good team to go against. And with no disrespect to Anderson and Gallows, I haven't really – thought that they've they've been in higher since they split them all from AJ. Yeah. They've made them into a joke and that's a shame because yeah. this team was probably one of the hottest teams in Japan. Especially with that feud with the Dudleys. That was terrible. That hurt them. Yeah. 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 I know. And then we jump into the singles matches where in this case the Cruiserweight Championship with Brian Kendrick, which, by the way, I sent him a congrats text, and he responded. So, luckily, he still has the same number. And nice. he's taken on, on Kalisto, but in this case, here's a stipulation for this. Because it's Raw versus SmackDown in this, in this matchup. If Kalisto wins the title, the Cruiserweight title and the division itself will transfer over to SmackDown. I like that idea. I really do. And this is, and, and although this could cripple Raw in, in, in a sense because they were looking for something to fill that third hour. But I feel like Raw, the audience on Raw, I don't know if they really can enjoy the cruiserweight as much. And I just feel like there's a difference in, 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 in the audience on Raw and SmackDown. They just don't enjoy it, as the, some of the, the quality of the matches. Although I find that Raw has more talking than SmackDown does. Now, with this match itself, I am a fan of Brian, uh, Brian Kendrick, 
but I'm kind of leaning. I really feel like SmackDown. I agree with what Nate was saying. I feel like this could this could be SmackDown's big night, and that will cause a lot of problems for Raw the very next night. Foley could end up getting fired, but we'll talk about that in just a bit. <laughs> My money on this match. I want to go with Brian, but ultimately I'd like to see the cruiserweights on SmackDown. I think it'll benefit the yeah. show so much better. So I'm going to go with Kalisto on this one for the win. Nate? Oh, man. A couple things here, Felix. Like, I think they they went to this Kalisto thing way too soon, you know, because he had the great spot on SmackDown where he came back and got revenge against Baron Corbin. And so, yeah. I, like, it feels like Kalisto's get, he's getting this title shot out of nowhere. Uh I think you're right, though, that SmackDown needs the Cruiserweights more than Raw. Plus, they've got that new show uh, coming up, uh, what is it, 205 Live or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, I, I think SmackDown should win this. Uh, emphasis on the should, but I don't think they will. I'm going to say that Raw wins, and uh, I'm going to say Brian Kendrick retains, you know, so, uh, shout, shout out to friend of the program, Brian Kendrick. Awesome. All right, Elia, what are your thoughts, man? Uh, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with uh, the Cruiserweight moving over to SmackDown. All right. Any reasoning behind that, or it just, just feels like it's a, bit, a better choice? Uh, I, I just, uh, it looks like it would uh, do a lot better on SmackDown than it's doing on Raw. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, another singles match. In this case, I believe the same stipulation applies. The Intercontinental Championship, the champion Dolph Ziggler taking on Sami Zayn. I think that Sami Zayn needs this win. He really does need this win. Because, you know, here's the thing. Stephanie McMahon, some like her. They try to make her out. They tried hard to make her to be the really nice wench that she pretends to be. And <laughs> the thing with that is that she's a tyrant. She's she's an overbearing bitch of a boss. Let's just put it that way. And that side's going to come out very soon. It, it It's creeping up on everybody. And that's what I feel like is going to happen because of the SmackDown's victory. I really believe that's coming out. Anyways, she obviously proved she's not a fan of, of Sami Zayn, which is fine, whatever. But on the other hand, him winning can benefit that show. Putting the, 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 two, the two big titles there, the, uh, the Intercontinental and the U.S., it could benefit the show. It really could. And after Ziggler put up his career for the title win, it almost kind of, you kind of go back and forth on that. You look at that, and he's like, put his career on, a, on the line to win this title back. Only for him to lose it the very next pay per view. I don't know. If I have the betting man, I want to see it go to Raw. I really do. I, I think Ziggler will benefit uh, doing other things on the show. I mean, he's successful no matter what, even though they kind of make him to be a joke. And since Hunter's, I don't know if Hunter's running uh, SmackDown as much as he is Raw or whatever. I just don't think he, he benefits when Hunter's running things because Hunter has no faith in him. And that's a shame. That's just my personal opinion. But, um, Elio, who do you think is going to leave with the IC belt? I'm going with uh, Sami Zayn. I'd like to see him uh, come out, walk out with the championship. Okay. And mm-hmm. how about you, Nate? What do you think? I think that this will be a really good match, and it might steal the show for match of the night, uh, given the quality of both guys. But – and, and, and you're right, Sammy does need this win, but I don't think you can take the title off of Dolph this quickly either, you know, coming off of the, the whole deal with the Miz where if I don't win this, I don't deserve to be here, you know, all that, all that stuff. So yep. I think Dolph wins, but here's, here's the thing, though. I think Dolph wins, but like I said, I think SmackDown wins the overall Survivor Series team thing, whatever, and I think Sammy yep. Zayn ends up being one of the draft picks to come over to SmackDown. Okay. That's actually a good idea, too. I like it. I like it. All right. We go to the women. 
And this one, again, is another one that seems very one-sided. Look at Team Raw. we got the champion, Charlotte Flair. Bailey, Nia Jax, Alicia Fox, and Sasha Banks, the boss. And they have Dana Brooke in their corner. Team SmackDown, led by Nikki Bella, Becky Lynch, that little half pint, Alexa Bliss, Carmella, and Naomi. And they have Natalia in their corner. Look at the difference in teams here. I mean, my God, they've got Charlotte Flair, they've got Bailey, they've got Nia Jax, they've got Sasha Banks. I'm not a, I, nothing against Foxy. She brings the, the 10 years, but again, so what? <clears throat> this team is stacked. And it just seems like Team SmackDown is hurting. They're hurting for talent on that side. Because Nikki and Becky are basically the ones that, are, that, that to me, are the leaders of the team. And they put Natty on the sidelines. How stupid is that? Natty, of all people, could get in there and match power to power with somebody like a Nia Jax. And she's sitting at ringside. Think of the logic behind that. How stupid does that sound? I mean, just, just, just my opinion. And they've got all these little guys and little gals. I'm sorry, these little gals, not guys. They're not on the guys yet. And they're putting them in there to be annihilated against powerful team that Raw has. And they have a really good team. And at this point, we don't know the stipulation yet, as, as Nate was clearly pointing out. But it, it, it just seems more one-sided that Raw was going to come out of this and win it. And that's by some miracle. SmackDown uh, divas, I'm sorry, they're not divas, they're superstars, the women, can pull this out and win by some miracle? I'm on this on Raw. I can't see them, I can't see them not winning this. So I'm going to go with the women on Raw for the win. Although, I really believe SmackDown needs, the, needs women more too. They have, both brands need women. What am I talking about? They need more women on the, on the show because the ones that they have, they're not doing much with them. Anyways, Nate, what what are your thoughts on on these SmackDown and the Raw women? Uh, well, I'd love to use the old oh, dirty bastard, brother Felix. Ooh, baby, oh, I like it, Raw. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I think Raw gets this one, man, just because, like you said, the teams are are so unevenly matched. And I think if they know what the hell they're doing, I don't think they know what the hell they're doing. But if they are doing, you know, this points thing, then I think this is the one match where Raw gets their point. Because yeah. uh, I think, you know, you can easily have SmackDown lose just, you know, by having Bailey and Alexa, uh, not Bailey, uh, Becky and Alexa not get along. Or, you know, Carmella and Nikki not seeing eye to eye. This might be the big showcase for Nia Jax. Uh, it's either going to be the big showcase for Nia Jax or Charlotte somehow gets eliminated and Bailey is the one that wins for the team and Bailey kind of shows up Charlotte and shows that she's not the weak link, but a raw win feel it. Yeah, I have to agree with that. And Elio, uh, which women's team do you see coming out victorious? Yeah, Raw is the stronger team on this one. I'm going with Raw. I'm sorry. I'm going oh, with okay. Raw. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and then we move over to, I'm going to say probably the main event. That should be the main event, but it probably won't be. <laughs> A lot of explosive personalities in, in each team. And they seem almost evenly matched. Team Raw has the Universal Champion, or should I say champions, Jericho and Owens, <laughs> uh, Roman Reigns, the United States Champion, Braun Strowman, the muscle-bound freak of nature that can't wrestle to save his life, uh, and of course the architect, Seth Rollins, taking on SmackDown Live, led by the World Heavyweight Champion, or the WWE Champion, whatever, however you want to look at him, AJ Styles, the Lunatic Fringe, Dean Ambrose, the Wyatts, uh, Bray Wyatt, and 
of all people. That one still kind of has me at my head, has me scratching my head. Randy Orton. And the fifth man mm-hmm. that was put in just this past week, Shane McMahon. Now, right. Luke Harper and James Ellsworth are going to both be ringside for this. And why is not Luke Harper now, in this? Pardon? Why is not Luke Harper in this? Why did they put Shane McMahon in? Well, I know. That's, that's a good question, they Leo. <laughs> they, I don't think they even answered why at this point because it seemed like Baron Corbin just didn't want to be part of it. So they took him out. And they put Shane in. I think they just want Shane had the itch to get back in the ring, honestly. And again, I think he's going to be the one. Well, not let's just say he won't be the sole survivor, but he'll definitely be the one leading his his brand in, into victory. And like I said, we've got a lot of explosive explosiveness in this match. And I don't know. They're trying to really hype Braun Strowman in, as possible sole survivor for the team. He is the biggest one on the team. Going up in there and against the guys like a Randy Orton or a Bray Wyatt who can wrestle circles around him. I I, I have to go with Team SmackDown on this one because the personalities clash. There's just no cohesiveness on either side, really. But with Shane there, it can kind of bring some kind of calmness to a point, of course. A little bit of law and order somewhat, but I just, you know, I do it all. And my second question, my first question will be who comes out of this victorious and opposes to both of you. My second question is why in me hell, why in me hell do they got somebody like a James Ellsworth so freaking popular? I don't get it. <laughs> I watched it week after week after week after week after week after week. After week. And you know what? I have to agree with Booker T. There is too much of this kid. I, 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 I did some uh, research on this guy on Wikipedia. He was, on, he was a tag team on the independent scene. He teamed up with, uh, this, he teamed up with this one guy, right. Adam Ugly, and they called themselves Pretty Ugly or something. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, Lord, Lord. I just I just don't get it. I mean, we'll talk more about James Ellsworth here, but which one of the teams come out of this one? This is the real the the, the other half of the main event, really. Team Raw versus Team SmackDown and the guys. There's this there's a lot that could happen. Could we see? And I've been asking this since he appeared once. Could we see the return of Triple H? I'm wondering where he's going to pick his spot to come back. Because what if it's down to? To Seth Rollins is the only one left taking on one of the other teams of uh, uh, team members of SmackDown, and Triple H makes an appearance and costs him the match. It, it could happen, but maybe they're saving that for the early part of 2017. Nonetheless, guys, those are my two questions. Nate, I'm going to start with you. What are your thoughts? Uh, well, first of all, with Triple H, I don't think we see him at. Survivor Series, even though that, that would be nice because that storyline seems to have been dropped lately. Uh, but I don't, I don't think time. we see Triple H, Triple H back until maybe around Rumble time. Um, okay. okay. But in, in terms of this match, I think that SmackDown wins uh, for a couple reasons. One, because I think the hottest performer out of either side is AJ Styles. And I think you you know, when I keep that momentum going, put AJ over, and it also, you know, gives SmackDown the the 2 1 advantage or whatever uh, for uh, the the points thing, if they're still going to do that. Um, But the other thing is with the way this thing is set up, and it's a problem I have with all three of these matches, Felix. Like, I think it's a step in the right direction to bring back the old school Survivor Series matches, but I don't like that all of the matches feature teams that have faces and heels on the same team. Because every match is telling the story of, these guys just can't get along. Like, I'd I'd rather see at least one of the matches be like all faces versus all heels. Um, Like, to me, like the best Survivor Series match lately, and obviously I'm biased, Felix, because I'm I'm a Sting fan, was uh, I think it was 2010. You know, with the whole Cena, Team Cena versus Team Authority. No, it's 2014. I, I thought that 
2014. Okay, yeah. Hey, man, it's after this election, I, I've got no track of what, what time it is now, brother. If it's got everybody all flustered up. <laughs> but uh, 2014 to me, that, that was it. So uh, I think that match actually felt like it had stakes and it had real stuff that was important. Um, where, frankly, this match, it'll be cool, but I don't feel the, the, the gravity and the importance on these stakes. So SmackDown wins, and I say AJ is probably going to end up pinning uh, Jericho, um, probably through some miscommunication with Owens, who's already been eliminated, which kind of furthers their little mini storyline that they've got going. Uh, but, yeah, I say SmackDown wins it. Okay. And, Ilya, what are your thoughts? I'm actually going to go with the SmackDown side because I, I I like the way uh, that team uh, I like the the way the team looks there on uh, Raw. I don't know, no one no one on there is can, can I don't think anyone on there can get along. And I uh, I think they're gonna lose and Jericho's gonna put everyone on the list. Okay. Everyone's going on the list. Okay, I know, right? <laughs> I really think they're trying to push Jericho to go back to being a face again, but that's another story. I guess. You know, well, you know, the, the interesting aspect in this is the fact that we we get to see a uh, Seth Rollins versus AJ Styles in a match in in, in, the, in this match. We could see uh, guys on the uh, from the Shield battling each other. We can go in there and see uh, a Randy Orton taking on a Kevin Owens. Or even a Bray Wyatt taking on a Kevin Owens. Or even a Shane McMahon. Now, I pray that that little, the little tiny man that's in their corner, it doesn't get involved. <clears throat> Could somebody explain to me the popularity of this guy? He, 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 I, I don't get it. I, 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 is this, is this a ha-ha? Is this a, is this a, a, a rib that they're doing, keeping around because he's so ridiculously annoying and, and can't wrestle to save his life, and it's just ugly as hell. And they just don't know what to do with him. He's a Gilbert two, 2.0. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> if he starts coming <laughs> out, to, if he starts coming out to sparklers, then we're in trouble. <laughs> the crazy thing to me about uh, Ellsworth is, you know, I think he's. He's he's funny in doses, but to the extent that they put him in this title program, I haven't enjoyed it because I think it takes away from or what should be kind of the seriousness of the belt. But if this whole thing ends up with uh, a, a double turn with AJ going face, even though he can get more money out of him as a face, just being a heel. I think, okay, I, I haven't liked the amount of Ellsworth stuff, but if it makes sense and it has a purpose and a plan behind it, then then I'm okay with it. Okay. All right. And that's the 2016 Survivor Series. They've got the Go Home Show uh, Monday night. As I mentioned, the face-off between Goldberg and Lesnar. Uh, SmackDown Live has been invited to Monday Night Raw. <clears throat> See if there's any fireworks that can be built up before they go home for the main for the main show coming up uh, a week from Sunday. Well, a week from tomorrow. Duh. Hello. Anyways, we'll see what happens. You know, anything can happen in the, in the next two days. Not to mention the fact that SmackDown Live is celebrating their 900th episode. 900 episodes with the return yeah. of Edge and the Phenom returns to SmackDown, yeah. <laughs> a place that he made famous. You know, and, and it'd be good to see him back. He hasn't been, he hasn't been seen since WrestleMania. Pictures of the everyone resurface always, of him being in Cleveland. Everyone always makes a big they see him on crutches or whatever in pictures, and they say, "Oh, this is well, the last there, there has been speculation for years on whether or not uh, we have seen the last of him. He is 51 years old. His body has been put through hell, and, but he. It goes back to something he said uh, year, a couple of years ago. He doesn't do it for the money. He does it because where else can he get paid to go out and punch somebody in the head? And, you know, mm-hmm. he does it for fun. He, 
the reaction that the, the crowd, the, the the whole thing really still gets to him. You know, on the other hand, there has been talks that 33 will be it. No, no guarantees because, like I said, this is something that's been going on for for years now. Every year is it? Is that it? Is that it? Is that it? Is that it? Nobody knows. And to be honest, I don't care to know because only the one who can know will be the dead man. He knows when it's time. And we'll just leave it at that. If people can leave it at that, then we'll be fine. But you know what? These dirt sheets these days, everybody's got speculations and everybody's going to give their opinions. And, well, that's the wrestling dirt sheets for you. That being said, I have to mention one aspect of the show that I haven't really mentioned just yet. And I don't bring it up very often because I try not to. I try not to because of my involvement in it. An update on the issues between uh, the estate of, of, of China, Joni Lauer. Mm. The estate, here's the thing. Her mother filed papers to get controlling aspect of her estate, and she got them. She, she is now the one in charge. She, her manager has no control over anything in regards to China anymore. And some say that's the best decision possible because that was that. I mean, that is her mother. Some say otherwise. I can't really speculate and give too much information because of my involvement. I have already spoken to her mother. I, I, I do keep in contact with her. And I still run her social media. She has created a GoFundMe account to help finances and so forth uh, with protecting China's rights. And so that she can rest in peace. What that means exactly, I don't really know. I just, I, I know that going forward, anything that happens is going to go through her mother. If she gets the Hall of Fame induction that many expect her to get, I'm not, I'm telling you right now, don't hold your breath. But if she gets it, it'll go through her, whether or not she accepts it. I would like to think that she would, but who knows? Because now, Keep in mind, she hasn't really been in China. She had contacted her mother, and they were in contact for about two years through emails, through text messaging, I believe, but mostly through emails because she actually was in, and even phone calls too, excuse me. But um, there was really no connection. And what I mean by that is they hadn't met in person. And everybody and anybody who knew China felt they had a connection to her. Therefore, they would come out and give their start, their side of the story of how things worked with China. And you know what? Some of, it, some of it was true. She had erratic behavior. She was going through a lot in her life. She was afraid for her life most of the time because she didn't know what to expect. She loved her fans, but she was afraid of what would happen uh, in certain situations. I believe, excuse me, I believe I mentioned this one time. I was on the phone with her to and from the airport when she was going to WrestleCon. She was going. She wasn't in the best condition to go. And I honestly wish I could have gone with her, but that's another story. But I was on the phone with her as she drove up to the airport or was driven and was driven back. She didn't make her flight. She wasn't in the best condition to fly. But she was terrified. Terrified. She thought Vince and the WWE were going to have her arrested as soon as she, she got off the plane. In, in, in Dallas Why? I don't know But that's another story Like I said, I, I, I know a lot of what's gone on And as far as Her mother's capacity goes I can only pray That she keeps, it, keeps everything going And allows me to continue to, to Run the social media as I have As of now I am the only one who runs it There are fan pages that are out there That keep in contact with her as well But I have the official social media, and I am the only one that runs it. If there comes a time that she asks to rel- ask me to relinquish, then so be it. But I like to try to feel like I bring some kind of. Let's just say I hope that I do that pay her social media justice because I really have tried my best in the last uh, uh, seven months since China's passing to to post as much as I could to bring smiles to people's faces, to bring, to help remember her legacy, what she created, the good, 
And yes, there were some bad times, but you know what? She created a lot more good than she did bad. That's my personal opinion. And my point to this is, is that don't believe everything you read. Don't believe everything you hear. Because not everybody was as close to her as they like to think. And that's all I'm going to say about that. <clears throat> Moving on to a more controversial subject. Lord have mercy. Oh, Lord, the world needs Medea leading the country. Let me just tell you. <laughs> because this past Tuesday night, and I, would, I will admit, I stayed up pretty late. Because I'm watching and I'm thinking, okay, Trump wins this this state, Trump wins this state, and then Trump wins this state, and I'm like, my God, they didn't. She didn't. He he didn't win California. Yeah, California. There, I've seen posts uh, on Facebook of saying California should be its own nation. I'm like, oh my God. And here's here here here's what's really funny. I wrote a, a uh, nonfiction type story for my uh, history class that kind of went off with the fact that California is, California gets separated from the rest of the nation thanks to uh, President Trump. I called this even way back when. This is like as far back as, uh, oh, gosh, I want to say earlier this year, uh, I'm going to say spring of 2016. So when I start to see all this come to fruition, I'm scared because I'm scared. I'm wondering if they're going to have that big earthquake that's going to separate the rest of us uh, here in California from the rest of you guys here in the nation, the United States, and Trump is in charge. So do you, do you remember that movie Escape from L.A. with Kurt Russell? <laughs> that was where I was basing a lot of my story from. Only I'd put Trump in as a, as a president in this case. And it's happening. I'm like, oh, my God, what the hell just happened here? What did I just write? Anyways. We've got Trump as the new president of the United States, president-elect. Many people are fearing for their lives. Many people are fearing for deportation. Many people are fearing, what the hell did this man, what is he going to do with us? Well, how is he going to lead us? Is he going to be a good leader? Is he going to be this uh, television personality that has absolutely no political experience whatsoever? Wrong. I can all you hear him saying wrong. I don't know why I feel like I, I could try to Im- imitate Trump, but I can't. I just don't know what to do <laughs> with this. You know, the, what, I, what I will say, though, is now that it's happened, we don't have a choice. We have to allow him to, to prove what he can do, if he can do anything. Because he's got four years to prove it. Four years comes and goes really fast. Will he get a second term? Who knows? He might be probably the most popular president we ever had, or he may not. He may get, he may end up losing. He may get assassinated, God forbid, because I ain't going to try to predict anything because lately I've been predicting a lot of things. But I don't really know what to expect with Trump. But the only thing I will say is we have to give him a chance. Like it or not, he is who's going to be running the, pres- the, the, the country for the next four years. Nate, you've been itching to say something. I can feel it. I can feel it. <laughs> what you got to say, man? What you got to say about our new president? Yes, our, our new president-elect, Hall of Famer, Donald Trump. <laughs> oh man, it 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 was a surprising outcome. You know, obviously, you know, nobody in the polls really saw it coming. At least, you know, in the mainstream national polls. Uh, but it. It didn't shock me because I knew that there was a lot of frustration in the country. And, you know, I'm not going to say everybody that voted for Donald Trump was, you know, racist or sexist or homophobic or anything like that. The guy that they voted for, he did, you know, speak a lot of hate. And so what I hope is that will force Donald Trump to be the president for everybody, like he said he wanted to be, and that, you know, he can be somebody that brings us together instead of tears us apart because, you know, th- this isn't a game, man. This isn't a reality show. This is not a wrestling angle. This is real life. And so I hope he takes the job seriously. You know, uh, it, it's something that, like you said, you know, he is our, be our president in January. And so, you know, I don't want people to be like the Republican and, and just, you know, 
put the fingers in the ears and say no to everything. You know, if, if he has some good ideas and if he's honest about wanting the country to, you know, let, let's, let's see what he's got. But also, Felix, it's up to people like us and, and people that are listening that might not agree with everything he says to watch him and keep his feet to the fire and don't become apathetic to the political process. Like in 2020 or 2018, when you get a chance to vote in your midterm elections, like, you know, and make sure that the president is doing what we want him to do. Cause he works for us. Doesn't matter how much money he makes or where, what his stat stature is. He works for us, you know? And so if he's out here talking hate or, or, you know, saying stuff that we don't like, we got to make our voice be heard and not just on Twitter, Felix, or on social media. Get active in your community. Get at, get active in politics and, you know, keep this country moving forward. Because I do think, regardless of how fractured the country felt on Tuesday, part, man, people want the same things in life. And, and people want the same things in America. And, you know, progress, even if it sometimes – take a step backwards. I think progress is always moving forward and it's a process. And I think, you know, we're, we're Americans, man. We, we're not going to let one dude, around, even if what, even if that one dude is the president, Felix. Agreed. Agreed. At this point, you know, you just never know because think, think about this. And you guys were all, we were all young when this, this guy was the president, but look at, uh, look at uh, George senior, George Bush senior. He only went yeah. in for one term. Some thing thought he was he was just a a, uh, a wimp. After having Reagan for for those two terms in the eighties, and then coming into Bush Senior, and well, they just didn't think he was the greatest. He was all that great. You know, he only had one term, and some say he did a lot. Some say he didn't do enough. But the bottom line was he had that chance to prove it. And for these ridiculous, and I'm sorry, it's ridiculous. These uh these what are those uh, protests? that people are doing around the country and seeing that these kids are so wink, wink traumatized that they get let out of this and they get babied. I'm like, grow the fuck up people. I mean, dude, you're in college. You want to be baby. Take your ass back home. You're in college. You can <laughs> by, you bypass and allow to, you know, be taking, you're going to see psychiatrists or you want a cookie and you get, you get, you get, uh, get uh, what's it? Uh, you get a, you get a by, bypass to, not have to take tests or certain grades or whatever the case was that they allowed these students because they're so traumatized because Trump is president. You know what? Not every president is going to be squeaky clean. Not every president is going to have the, the, the best record out there. Look at Obama when he first came in. He underwent a lot. He, had, he, took, he was under a, a, shit, a shit storm. I mean, we were under, we were in the recession, for Christ's sake. And yep. the man had to take, he came in in the worst possible time in American history since the depression and had to undertake a lot and some say he didn't do enough but then why did he get elected to two terms back to back if he didn't do a lot for one thing the first thing he did in his first term and he i'm sure many people will bring this up obama made made a point of making it happen to have osama bin laden killed Mm -hmm. you know that's one thing he did in his very first term and now people have the utmost love and respect for him, and people are praying and hoping that Mrs. Obama runs for president in 2020 because it's just proof. And this is this is no dig at Hillary. Hillary did, did what she could, and she honestly, if I was voting, and I didn't vote, but if she was voting, or I'm sorry, if I was voting, I would have voted for her. Personal opinion. That's it. And that's not because she's a woman, and it's not because she was. She it means that crazy ass Bill, uh, slick Willie will be back in the White House again. <laughs> but you know, I just think that maybe she, she she being having the experiences she's got in politics, emails aside, maybe she could have done more. Maybe not. We'll not. We'll not we're not going to know anytime soon. But the bottom line is, we've got to let him prove what he can do, if he can do anything. Because I promise you, if he can't do nothing. And somebody else comes in with a better track record, he's gone. He won't. He, he'll be a distant memory, and he'll go back to telling people on TV that they're fired, and being the WWE Hall of Famer that was a former president. <laughs> That's about it. 
you know, that's, that's about as much value Donald will bring if he if he doesn't do good in his term. So he's got a big he's got really big shoes to fill. And we'll find out if his orange covered ass can actually do it. Now, Elio, I know that we haven't really uh, brought you into this yet, but I mean, you know who Donald is. You know what mm-hmm. he can do. You know what mm-hmm. he's done. What are your thoughts? Um, do you hear? Because people were talking that you know the American people would possibly jump ship and go to Can- to go to Canada. They won't go to Mexico because there'll be a wall so big they won't be able to crawl back over. But they'll go to Canada. Well, well, he gave uh, quite a sacred speech, uh, and now everyone's protesting something that already happened. He already won, and everyone's pro- all these protests are going up. Yeah. He hasn't, he hasn't even done anything yet. So I, I think I, know. I, I think let's just see what he can do first, and then we'll. I think they just, we'll I just, I think they need to let him grab, grab him by the pussy, and and, and just let it get over with. Did I just say yeah. that? Yeah, just say that. Oh well. Just get over it, people. He's, you know, like I said. Anyways, I'm sorry, Elliot. Go ahead. You're you're protesting something that already happened, and you're just wasting energy. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty much the case. I mean, as I said, the kids of this generation, they do nothing but bitch and complain, and give out protests and whine and 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 what was me and poor me and want handouts. I really believe, and, and, and this is no dig at the kids, but it kind of is, but Elio, myself, and Nate's generation are the last of a dying breed. I mean, I really believe that. We're, not, we're the last of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the generation that had no cell phone when we were kids. Hmm. We only had the pagers. We had no, we had no uh, Wi-Fi issues, and we were fine with that. You know, we had a lot of things that we're okay with, that is just, and we weren't spoiled. We, but we were got, we got told to kick asses outside and play until the light, street lights came on and then bring your asses home. You know, we got the thing, the simpler things in life, and we weren't asking for handouts. We were not afraid of hard work. We went out there and we did it. That's good because that's how we were brought up. And if we, and this is the one thing that the kids of this generation need, that we got. If you talk back to your parents, you got five across the eyes or even a belt across the ass. <laughs> no disrespect to the parents back in our in our generation because you got your ass. I talk back to my parents. And I not, have to. I, I, start, I have to start running. Right? You know. <laughs> and now and, and now so apparently it's illegal to, to to spank your parents. or spank your parents. Although that might be a smart choice this generation. <laughs> spank your parents because because the kids ain't getting it, but. Kids need to be getting because they get too big headed, and they're and then they get they get in there and they start to complain about who's leading the country when he hadn't even done nothing. All he's done is just, all they see is what the media has portrayed him out to be. He's not the most innocent guy out there. I I admit that. He's a jackass. He's a, a overheated windbag. But he's the president. It's done. It's over with. What can you do? We can't call for his impeachment. He hasn't even started yet. Oh, me, oh my. Anyways, I do want to kind of go back into wrestling for just a moment, as I have been watching uh, more often than not than I have been in a long time. And I have to say, I have really enjoyed the reinvention of the Hardy Boys. Brother Nero and Broken Man <laughs> Hardy. I've really enjoyed their, re- their, their reinvention of their characters because it, it was something fresh. It was something different. But now that, that that brother Nero is trying to convince Matt to go back and dip into the pool or the water or the whatever, and because he's got amnesia, battling these DCC guys. Somebody explain to me what DCC stands for, what it means, because all I see are I, I, guys I, 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 in black suits I, I, and a white mask. That's it. Yeah, I saw these guys with the white masks. Who are they? I'm curious to find out myself. Because they obviously couldn't do much. They couldn't do much with them. The Hardys were the, they were they were getting their butt whooped. And this is apparently the new person that's gonna the new team that's gonna take on uh, the Hardys now that uh, DK is out of the picture. Which I think they should hurry up and bring their butts <laughs> back because I enjoyed them. I really enjoyed what, what DK brought. 
Were you going to see Final Deletion 3? <laughs> no. I, I don't really know what to, what to expect going forward because I know Billy Corgan is no longer with the company. And he was apparently the one, the heir to take over the company. Uh, uh, but that's not going to happen. So it's now really- what? You know, it, it, it just it, when you think that things could get better for TNA, they don't. But they, they they still keep putting along. They're not out of the picture. They're just not doing the best. But the stories are good. I like E. Lie Drake. I like EC3. I like what they're doing. I'm not sure what they're doing with Aaron Rex just yet. I still feel like they're starting to, starting to dabble with him being a bad guy now. And trying to push this guy, push Jesse Goddard, who's also a former guest of the show, as as maybe a top contender for 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 a big championship match. I'm not sure what they're doing with Lashley just yet, though. He seems to be this indestructible force that takes on every, anybody and everybody, and sometimes two at a time. <laughs> and yet, the, the TNA, what TNA and WWE have in common, they still have two ridiculous characters that get over so well with the crowd, and I still don't get it. We've got James Ellsworth for the WWE. We got Grado for TNA. What the hell is a Grado? <laughs> I can't understand these guys' popularity. Popularity, guys. I, 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 uh, these guys are, are glorified jobbers that are getting over so well with the crowd, and yet I, I, I don't get it. <sighs> Anyways, and that's where we're at right now. Huh. But. Um, I do want to bring up something real quick here while we're we're still on, and that is I'm going to turn the mic over to Nate, and here's why. I want to find out what he's been up to because this man has been anywhere, everywhere, and in between <laughs> for so many different shows, doing so much different things now. It's like, my goodness, it's the busiest man on the mic, the busiest man in entertainment. Minnie Max, you better get, get this guy a contract because – Fight Bomb Radio will be coming to an end soon, and uh, he's got to ha- he's got to have a better contract than what he, he, than I'm giving him because uh, Vinny Mac got more money than I do. That's the damn truth. <laughs> but uh, what's going on with you, Nate? What's going on? Oh man, brother Felix, I, I got I got a lot going on, my man. I got uh, you know a, a new episode of Review America with Brian Mann, former WWE writer. Uh, Matter of fact, we just got through recording it before Pipe Bomb Radio started tonight. Uh, nice. And, you know, we, we break down the election and, and give our thoughts and, and maybe some helpful advice for the country as we try to come together and heal and, and work towards uh, that brighter future that we all want for ourselves and our families. Uh, so I got that coming on the Fight Network. <laughs> A top secret show that we might be uh, coming out with. Oh. So anybody that liked Review and Impact, we, we, we like our top secret project, but uh, you have to wait on that. Uh, of course, I got the Kings of Sport that uh, Brother Felix has been on before with Marcus Vandenberg uh, from Yahoo Sports. Every week uh, we, we uh, try to bring you guys some great sports coverage with a different perspective. I've got uh, Always Forward, which is a Luke Cage show, reviewing the uh, Netflix Luke Cage series, uh, Always Forward. And uh, I've got uh, Place to Be Nation, Clotheslines and Headlines. I've got Pipe Bomb Radio. I've got High School Football. So, yeah, i got a lot going on. But you can find out about all of it uh, on my Twitter page, uh, at in the number 8, M-O-Z-A-I-K, at name Mosaic. And uh, also uh, on my website, uh, brother, <laughs> brother, N-A-T-E. i got a lot going on, Brother Felix, but you know I always – Got time for El Jefe and, and, and the Pipe Bomb Radio crew. Holy cow. You even got your own website? Damn. <laughs> <coughs> Busiest man in show business, I tell you. I tell you. And Elio, what's yes, been going on with you, sir? I know you are you still working with uh, Wrestling News Source? Yeah, but that actually, so like, I'm aware of all the stuff that gets posted. And um, we brought in a whole group of uh, new writers. And, like, I don't necessarily agree with everything that gets posted. Sometimes I think they just post just to say that they posted something. 
Interesting. Yeah. Ah. Like, you know, it's uh, funny. Like a... and, and I have to give credit where credit's due to Elio, and I don't mean to cut you off, Elio, and I've said this before when we've had you on, I think. I think I have. I got hired to, to, to work with Wrestling News Stories. That's how I met Elio. Mm-hmm. And I lasted a month because I did the same thing he did. I lasted a month. <laughs> That's how stressful this job is. You have to literally write the results, type the results, excuse me, for Raw, for SmackDown, for the pay-per-views. Not only did Raw, and that was, and I think the pay-per-views too, excuse me. But that was a lot of work, and that lasted a month. And I was like, all right, peace. Mm. I, I, I'm out. I, this is too much for me, <laughs> and I'm not even getting paid for this. And, yeah, I, and took this I couldn't off. do it. I took the week off. <laughs> you know, and Elio has hung in there for the last several years uh, and is still going strong with them. He's still with them, and he does a hell of a job because, you know, every now and then I'll peek in to see how he's doing as far as uh, his play-by-plays, and he does. He, he's the best at what he does, which is why I still think they keep him around. And I think that's why they don't want to let him go because he really is what he, he does. He's good at what he does, you know. And you put up with a lot of crap, let's put it that way, because that's a stressful job. They, they have a lot of expectations, and you've got it down pat, man. And I, I, I got to give credit where credit's due. Keep doing the great job that you're doing. Thank you. But yeah, it's also it's also frustrating. Like when I go to do the results, I'm going to set it up, and I already see them posted already. So it makes me think, well, why am I doing them then? If someone else is going to post them mm-hmm. before I do. Especially on a week on a Mondays where it's a tape show and uh, they post all the spoilers. That's one thing I don't like. I understand. <clears throat> well, with that, I got to mention too, and I'm supposed to bo- post it to both you guys. Is uh-huh. I went to see a movie for the first time in, in a long time, and I went to see the new movie. Uh, with Danny Glover, oh gosh, I just lost what lost the name of it off the top of my head. The new Christmas movie with Danny Glover and Monique, mm. and you know, I have to say, as probably one of the funniest movies I've seen in a long time, had a little bit of heart to it as well because it, it you know, the matriarch had, had passed away, and they were trying to get the family together for for Christmas, and they all some dysfunctional ass people, but it was funny. And oh, I believe uh, almost got a lot out of the, that's the one. That's the one. And she brought a lot of comedy to that because she, well, she's Monique, but she can do that. <clears throat> and it just, it was a good family movie. And I encourage you guys to check it out if you have it uh, for a good laugh, for a good family uh, movie. I would say, check it out. You've got a lot of good characters in there. got a good cast. But um, have you guys seen any recent movies lately, Nate? Have you had time? I don't know if you have you. You're basically <laughs> ball and chain to the to the computer, and you know I don't know. Besides you going to work and and and, and cooking up a storm like you normally do, do you get out at all? I mean, my goodness, you got quite a life. It's like between work and uh, you know the football broadcast and the the podcast, man. I'm 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 on the microphones pretty much uh, all of my free time. But no, I haven't had a chance to get to the movies yet. Uh, but uh, I heard that that was good. The My Dear Boo movie was funny. So, uh, yeah, when I get some downtime here around the holidays, I'll, I'll definitely be hitting up the theaters. Yes, Boo and Madea Halloween, hilarious. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. You know. <laughs> and the characters she got in there, and, and I still think that was hilarious. That the trick-or-treaters coming in, and they're getting some candy, and she's handing them the candy and pulling out a handful back of theirs. So I was like, oh. <laughs> but um, Elio, what about you, pal? Have you seen any movies? Uh, any re- recent movies? No, I haven't seen any recent ones. So I, I popped into the library to do a pickup. <laughs> and I got some a couple of movies, so I got like Batman vs Superman because I hadn't seen I that one. I'm a big fan of that movie. I don't know. I'm not much into the superhero type movies, but. Yeah, you know, if you put on the bat, if you put, if you put on the Batman from 1989 with Nicholson and Keaton, well, I'll sit down and watch the whole thing. That's a, that's almost three hour movie. 
I love that movie. I have yeah. that on VHS. Yeah. Right? What is VHS? You ask any kid now, what is VHS? What is the VCR? <laughs> oh, my goodness, Actually, what's wrong with our generation? What's that movie today? Of course, Danny, Danny DeVito did a, a really good job as as the uh, as the penguin. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And let's be honest, guys. I I was still a fan, and I still am to this day, of the three witches on Hocus Pocus. Uh, <laughs> is that corny or what? Winifred. <laughs> oh man, that's uh, a- <laughs> that's a classic. Sarah and Mary, the Sanderson sisters. There we go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that was classic. A, a muck, a muck, a muck. <laughs> <laughs> and they had talked about them making a, the sequel to that because there was talk of a, a, the new Beetlejuice movie coming out that Keaton had agreed to do. <clears throat> well, you know, and who knows? And I mean, some, what, 20 almost 30 years later, could he still pull it off? That's the question. Anyway, I will remaking, save that for... What's that? They were talking about remaking The Breakfast Club. Oh, you can't? No, no. See, there's classics you can I remake, know. and there's some that you just can't. And we we talked about this one on our Halloween special when they tried to remake the Ghostbusters movie. No. People won't even go watch mm. it because it's just ridiculous. Why go watch something that was remade that didn't need to be remade? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways. Well, we will be back in about two weeks, of course. <laughs> I am working on having a guest come back to the show that we had on almost a year ago. Almost a year ago to the day. Who is that going to be? I guess I'm not going to ruin it just yet. Nate already has an idea who it's going to be. I'm working on it. I talked yeah. to him today. But, I mean... He was on. A, he was. He was at a show. So I'm gonna to try to reach out to him on Monday and see where things go. And I still have a surprise too because I have a surprise co-host that will be joining us as well if things work out the way I hope. But um, <clears throat> that being said, I think we'll go ahead and bring things to a close tonight. Keep it short and sweet. Touched on just about everything possible tonight. And you know what? Pray for the United States. Pray for the unity that we need desperately in this country. And people need to stop and just re- relax. You know, whether whatever happens, the world is going to be okay. You know, it, it, when, when the good Lord is ready to, for us to come back and, 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 and take us with him, it, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll definitely know when that's going to happen, too. In the meantime, buckle down and just, just just man up and deal with it. You know, we all, we're all going to be unhappy about everything in life, but we can't sit there and bitch and complain about it because it ain't going to get us anywhere. Trump is the president, and we got him for four years. Suck it up, buttercups, because it's going to happen. <laughs> that being said, on behalf of uh, Elio and Nate and myself, the Pipe Bomb Radio, we hope you've enjoyed our Survivor Series showdown tonight. Join us in two weeks as we will have our first guest back on the show. And until then, we'll see you guys then. Keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. Good night, everybody. Good night, guys. Thank you guys for joining me. All right. This show was huge, Felix. It was huge. (laughs) (laughs) Night, guys. All right. (laughs) 